Good morning. This is Mike Stoller for the Stoller Real Estate Report on the Cats Roundtable. What's happening in retail? New stores are opening all over the city. Things are looking bright. That wasn't the way a long time ago, but now things are out there. So today I have the opportunity to have a dear friend, one of New York City's retail leading consultants and brokerage firm, Corey Zelnick, who is the founder celebrating the 18th year and CEO of Zelnick & Co. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Michael. Always a pleasure. It's great to see you back over at the studios. You know, at ABC, you've been here before. Yes. So what's really happening? Today is the celebration of what? Naya? Well, Naya Grill, Naya, the Mediterranean QSR, quick service restaurant. A quick service restaurant on Park Avenue. Park Avenue, 49th Street, just opened up, and I walked by it on my way here. The line is around the corner. They're having their uh, 50% off giveaway on uh, for as a grand opening. And it's crowded, but Naya is a, they're a great operator. They have a, probably a dozen, maybe 15 stores around the city, and they have, they have a great business. Okay, it's also the opening of the new Whole Foods Dairy? What do they call it? Well, it's, it's, it's like, it's Whole Foods, but it's a, the thing about it is it's a reduced size. It's a smaller version of a traditional Whole Foods that may be 40 or 50,000 square feet. This is going to be about 10, 12,000 square feet up at, uh, Third Avenue and 69th Street. Right. And they're planning four others in the city before the end of the year. That's their goal. Right. So they're, they're really moving over there on that situation. Besides that, what's happening? Who else is coming into the town? Vorek? Vortex? Uh, well, no. Uh, Vori. Vori. Vori is a high-end uh, uh, apparel retailer out of California. They're on a big, big growth spurt. They just recently signed uh, what one would consider a flagship location, about 5,000 square feet down in the Flatiron District, uh, an area of town that if you ask me to, you know, and you may ask me along the way in this conversation about where the busiest areas in town are, the Flatiron District has really bounced back nicely. And so the numbers are high there. The average rents in the Flatiron District, they're in the vicinity of about $390, $400 a square foot. Why were they pre-pandemic? Uh, pre-pandemic, they were probably, you know, low threes, high twos, uh, during the pandemic, it obviously they fell off, and there was uh, nothing going on there, quite frankly, which was similar to the whole city. Uh, but it has really bounced back nicely. So, what are the other areas in the city that are growing? Soho, far west side. Yep. Well, so Soho, Soho, and Times Square were probably two of the first areas that came back post pandemic. Very tourist driven, so the tourists started to come back, and they hit these areas. Um, Everybody's providing chicken, r- raising cane, uh, right? Oh, you jump in meat, you jump into food. Yes, raising raising canes is uh, uh, they grabbing a footprint here in New York City as a whole. All, it's all the boroughs included. So they they have uh, they opened up a big flagship in Times Square. Uh, their sales are estimated year one to be about twenty eight million dollars, uh, and that's they just that's just chicken fingers, and uh, they're a big brand around the country. Uh, Chick-fil-A continues to roll out stores. Uh, I represent a company called Panda Express, uh, 2,700 stores around the country, also looking to increase the footprint around the city. We're up about 20 stores now in, the, in, in all the boroughs. And QSR seems to be the thing. Naya is a little bit more local. Uh, Kava is another brand. Kava's made. doing very well around the country. Yeah, Kava, Kava went public about six or seven months ago. And they're doing very well. They seem to have a slow, slow growth strategy, which is beneficial uh, to them. And so far, their numbers uh, look great around the country. So they're doing very well. With regard to Times Square, who else is opening up not being a QSR? Um, you know, down down in in uh, well down in Flatiron, we talked about the the, t- the retailers. The the Lululemons have expanded. You've heard of them, obviously, but they've expanded their brand down there. Uh, non QSR, Madison Avenue, luxury. Also, a strong, strong bounce back uh, post COVID. That's fifty uh, seventh to seventy second. Yeah, just in, in, that, in that market, um, po- uh, prior to COVID, the numbers hit as high as two thousand dollars a square foot. Uh, during COVID, they floored at five hundred dollars a square foot, and so a lot of the luxury brands saw that as opportunity, and they stepped in, and so now the and now the numbers are north, well north of 1,000 a foot. I haven't heard 2,000 yet, but I have heard 1,250, 1,300, 1,400 a foot where deals are getting done. And all, a lot of the luxury brands are, are opening or repositioning. With yeah. regard to that, what's happening on Madison from 44th to 57th Street? You know, it, it's, it's, one of those, it's one of those valleys in the city that you have to be here to really understand it. 
Um, things are starting to slowly turn around, and that that is from the benefit of people coming back to the office. You know, that's prime. It's prime Midtown territory, and you, you know, you have your 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 parameters are probably Forty Second to Fifty Seventh Street as your boundaries, and they're starting to slowly fill in. Uh, Chase's Tower is still two years away from being complete. Uh, but Grand Central Madison has opened, so there's a tremendous amount of traffic flow along the streets. But it's still very quiet there on the weekends, so it's right. hard but to Right, but I think part of the neighborhood is doing well because the LIR is now going into Grand Central. A hundred percent, and that t- that ties into the Grand Central Madison opening. Uh, they they have um, entrance exit on 47th and Madison, so it's just pulling the people right out, putting them right on the street. When we spoke the other day, we were talking about if you're a restaurant, the store could be leased within two weeks or something. Well, I, well, yeah. What I had said was what the, the the phrase is second gen. They the restaurant tours want a rest a location that was previously a restaurant, so their initial capital expenditure is low, and they can go in and you know change the paint and do things like that and move right in. And there is so much demand. The entrepreneurial spirit in the restaurant business throughout the city is unbelievable. The the restaurant openings. Are far exceed any other category in this city, and so when an op when a restaurant closes, the next one, the next tenant is waiting in line for the opportunity. Now, what about the luxury restaurants, the Daniel Baloo and so on? Yeah, you know they are separate. They are a total separate category. Though those type of uh, tenants usually have partnerships and relationships with the landlords and the buildings that they're going in. You see these things at One Vanderbilt, at 425 Park Avenue. And so what they do is they set up, they structure a, a type of partnership with the landlord. What about the cannabis business? Uh, the cannabis business is in a certain type of transition. We, we've, we're now phasing out, and the, the mayor is doing the best he can to get rid of all the illegal smoke shops that opened up. And, and that was, you know, they all opened up a, a, as part of the COVID process because you had landlord, not, not every landlord is, is Vornado or, or Rudin or, and things like that, or Tishman Spire. There are a lot of mom and pop landlords. In fact, they're the majority in this city. And so they had vacant spaces. And there were these tenants that were coming in at the time that weren't illegal. They came in and did CBDs and they did small delicatessens. And then what happened was they got turned over and converted into illegal marijuana shops. And they call them smoke shops. And what happened was at the same time that the OCM, the Office of Cannabis Management, was trying to control the legal cannabis business's growth. And so there was a lot of pushback, and now they're shutting down most of the illegal operators. It's going to take some time. They're up to about 3,000 of them. And the legal ones are starting to slide in. But it's my understanding that the OCM and that process is an onerous one. Okay, one uh, subject that you and I discussed the day, the other day, and which happened to me yesterday while walking on 61st Street between 3rd Avenue and Lexington Avenue, I was accosted at 3.15 in the afternoon. Safety is a problem today. You know, people with restaurants and so on. What, what's your thoughts about that? I think that's probably the number one problem. I think that the, the entrepreneurs or the major companies, they have the money to get their stores open and operating and they're looking to do it because they believe in New York over the long haul. But, but currently, uh, crime is a problem. It, it's just whether it's you walking down the street and, you know, thankfully you weren't hurt in any way or someone sitting outside at a restaurant and, 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 and a thief comes up to them and sees the watch they're wearing and just grabs it from them sitting at an outdoor cafe or it's the proliferation of, of these criminals that walk into the various drugstores and just fill up bags. They just fill up a bag and they walk out. And quite frankly, this goes back about a year and a half ago, I was standing in line at the pharmacy and I saw one of these criminals loading up a bag at the makeup counter. And I I videotaped it and I saw the manager come over to him and just say, hey, that's enough time to go. And on my way out, I went over to the manager. I said, what is that? He goes, they're here every day. I can't fight them. My bosses don't want me fighting them. I give them their minute let them do what they do, and then I just usher them out. But I think in conclusion, New York City is resilient. Things are getting positive. The retail is doing well, and I'd like to thank Corey Zellnick for being here today. See you next week. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate it. 
Hey, sports fans, Danny B here. Before you submit a play today or any day, call my free play hotline, 877-828-0120. Gain access to daily free plays on a recorded message, 877-828-0120. I've been a mainstay in the sports industry for over 40 years and respected coast to coast. All plays are top rated, posted daily on a recorded message, 877-828-0120. 